Hello YouTube, I am here to give my thoughts on the season finale. So they actually did get 10 episodes. I thought they might have would have got 12, but they got 10. And it looks like from what I seen this morning, they got a reunion. So I'm going to record that ugh, next week. And I'm about to get into, you know, uh, this schedule with the Come Up Miami and Chasing Atlanta. Due to what I got going on. So the first two minutes, y'all, is going to be a spill of what's going on with me. Then I get into the commentary. So if you want to zip for it, go ahead. But anyways, huh, I, I, I've been slacking on, you know, releasing the reviews right afterwards because of the fact that it, it, it they're released so close to the weekend. And y'all know I got this bitch that I live with that I can't record um, on the weekend. I don't feel comfortable recording with this bitch in here. So, I don't do videos for the most part unless she's working on Saturday. So, I bought, if I don't get it out Friday, I got to record it by Monday. Sometimes I'm, you know, and then I'm working. So, if I end up doing something Monday, then it comes into Tuesday. And then by the time you know it, I, hell, the next episode done came out. So, I decided that I'm letting Chase and Atlanta go for the time being. And I'm just going to go ahead and finish out with the come up Miami and well maybe I can go ahead and continue with uh Chase and Atlanta so maybe maybe I still do it but right now I'm not doing Chase and Atlanta until I get you know to come up Miami out the way because you know the videos are starting to become longer like this one is an hour and 10 minutes to break down and then you know Chase and Atlanta is the same thing and with all that I got going on during my birthday month it's very busy for me during this month I'm doing every everything but celebrating my birthday. It's like as a self-employed person, I got to file my taxes. I know a lot of y'all probably don't know how know the struggle of that life, but for self-employed people, yeah, I got to deal with the filing of the quarterly taxes. Then I got the seek out my multiple consultations. I got the darn going, try to find a therapist to get this transitioning started. Then I got to go to the trichologist for this hair. And it, it, it's just a lot of things that I got on the plate for this month. Um, So yeah, very, a, a lot. Credit repair. I, I, I'm all over the place. I'm, I'm real stressed out. <laughs> Whew. But now that we don't got all that out the way, you know, me dealing with my credit, these darn on bills, um, searching for yet another job because the wine.com done in it. Um, so now I got to see what else I can do online um, in the time being, in addition to me doing my door dashing and my part time because y'all know the, you know, my institution work is not you know, fully up and running just quite yet. So now that I done got all my shit out the way, let's get into the shit of the come up Miami. So since my laptop is doing good, it's not shutting down randomly no more. I hope I don't jinx myself. I'm going to go ahead and play it and give you my thoughts. Oh, and also I skipped episode nine on purpose because it was a filler episode. It just pretty much set up the blue, you know, set up the plot for this season finale. Hold on, let me pause, y'all. Don't y'all hate when this happens with the, um, shit, let's just start the fucking show. God damn. I guess y'all gonna be hearing it because I done fucked up my darn on headphones, y'all. So this is going to be an impromptu reaction until I get my darn on headphones right. See, and this is why I no longer like long nails because see, shit like this, I can't darn go and get the thing. Okay, I think I finally got it. Uh-oh, nope. See, this is why I hate fucking long nails. Okay, I think I got it, y'all. Can't y'all see that this year is not starting off right with me? It's taking me five minutes to get into the video, y'all. Okay, 
Oh, see, I got nothing. But pretty much, they just now summarizing the whole season. So the time that it's taking for me to do the review, it's taking them to start the darn on uh, show. So. And I'm lazy, so I'm not going to annotate this in the video because I don't feel like editing. So if you if you skip through, then you ain't hearing me say what parts to skip to. Okay, I think I'm there. I think I, oh shit, I don't. Know. I know y'all saying why. Ooh. Okay, finally got it, y'all. Let's finally get into it. My headphones is very much similar to my life. Just a very tangled mess. Damn, I wasn't kidding. It literally took them about four. It took them four minutes and 30 seconds. Oh, no. It's, and we still got some commercials. And then I, I no longer got my YouTube premium, so... It's hitting me with every single commercial. So it took me six minutes to start my shit. And it took them five minutes and 41 seconds. So, honey, it seemed like me and the darn gonna come up Miami is very much on par with each other. Okay, briefly to gloss over this. Um, because I... And not the you know, make um make it seem like it's insensitive or anything. Um, but you know, I've already done wasted seven minutes just darn on rambling about my own shit and darn on y'all see me fumbling with my headphones for two minutes. So we're gonna try to summarize all the stuff up as quick as possible, except for the end. We got to really break down the ending. But Sean is really conversing with his friend early in the episode in the car. He lost his father and his stepfather within a couple months of each other during this um, year of COVID. So my condolences go out to Sean. But that was pretty much um, the first part of this uh, episode was him breaking down. And that's from the six minute mark. Oh, they really gave him a good amount of time. I mean, you know, as they should. Um, but all the way to the 15 minute mark. So that pretty much sums up Sean right there. He lost two family members and he, he's been going through it. Okay, now we got the new addition. I still can't remember his name. Chocolate Skin. Is he a Xavier? I think he's a Xavier. Okay, everybody out partying, being their normal freaky deaky selves, half darn on neck, which, you know, we, we love a little bit of eye candy over here, honey. We, I ain't darn on judging, honey. And then we got a little backstory with Miles, Miles Spears. Uh, you know, with him being so light-skinned, I'm red bony, yo, thoughts can't clock me nowadays. Honey, I love to meet me some Miles Spears, honey. If y'all ain't subscribed to my Triple X version of Diva Wine on Twitter, honey, y'all can see some of my favorite, um, you know, posts of Miles Spears. But he he is darn going, honey. He's really giving pale tees with this darn going um, sunscreen and Miles. You, I, you know, they need to put you on to the black girl sunscreen. And that's literally the name of the sunscreen. It's called black girl sunscreen. It's very color friendly for us darn on melanated folks. Also, the Sarcadia sunscreen is, you know, melanated friendly for us. Um, I haven't tried the ordinary yet. I, so I got to get back with you on if it's color friendly for us where it don't have us looking so purple. But honey... Yeah, that he had you looking a little bit ashy, baby. 
Uh, and we, once again, we want you to be protected. We don't want you to be no sup. We don't want you being sunburned, especially since your body is your money maker, honey. But yeah, that 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 sunscreen wasn't black girl friendly on you, baby. And Bam being standoffish as per usual. But he's conversing. I mean, he's getting around. Oh, the psychic is there. I, it just took me looking back at this that the psychic is there. I, I didn't know that. The one that did the reading. So, ooh, th this is very interesting, honey. At least I think that's the psychic that did they reading. Okay, pretty much now Jovir is inviting them to another event. So far, so good. Everybody seems peaceful. Honey, I'm right, I'm right along with you. Drop 50 cent, drop a coupon, drop something, honey. Okay, so there's something else I didn't see the first time around. And you know, this is why I love looking at the playbacks because there's certain stuff that I miss when I just watch the shit. Um, Sean wasn't there for the final event and, you know, Joe Veer pointed to Sean and said, you can FaceTime us. And I ain't think that, that just went over my head that he wasn't going to be there for whatever reason, but he wasn't there where shit hit the fan. But at this point we make, it seems clear that, you know, Sean was not going to be there. Oh, here come they commercial again. <laughs> you know what? Maybe as a reviewer, I should darn on just go on here and pay the $11 a month to just bypass these commercials. Okay, 25 minutes in. See, I wouldn't have done this here at the darn on event. Like, this is so tacky. And then with everybody else seeming to know other than y'all too, it does come off a little bit messy. And then it's like, that liquid courage I've been drinking, I've been drinking, it's gonna backfire, baby, baby. Mm -hmm. Honey, this was not the time for you to darn on show. I mean, that, that, that was a little bit tacky for me. You 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 should have darn on waited towards the end of the party to say, hey, I need to converse with y'all in private on some matters. And because it's like when you have the group around and it's like, yeah, they was there. But it's like just the optics of everybody seeming to know the shit before you know it versus even though they known it, 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 it would have came off more sincere if you would have darn on pulled them together in private versus, you know, now they know what you're talking about and everybody looking at you some type of way like, mm hmm So I didn't like the way darn gone, uh, Prince darn gone pulled Javier to the side and started showing him the shit. But you know, Joe Veer laughed it off. He was a good sport about it. Pretty much has no validity to the accusations. But honey, this, this is classic darn gone gay shit, honey. So at the 27 minute mark, then Xavier jumps down and then they, they feel him in on the shit. And he laughs it off. But they're going to bring the shit back up later on, honey. Honey, come on through with these commercials, honey. Y'all getting y'all coins today. 
And just in case y'all wondering, uh, my shit just went out two weeks ago with the premium. So this is why I'm just noticing all these commercials for the first time. Because I didn't have to deal with these commercials until now. So flash forward a few days later, Jamal got his braids in and he's doing his uh, photo shoot for his clothing line. Okay, go ahead and get your money, honey. They okay. Mm. Honestly, I seem better. That that's no shade. That that's just true to you. But once again, you know, progress will come with time. Okay, now Joe Veer and uh, Xavier is talking about the situation, about how the situation was fake. I, and you know what? Jamal did come off as tacky with that darn on. I pay. I, I, I just darn on. Uh, whatever that bullshit phrase he said that I, 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 I tend to the business that pays me. It's like, well, bitch, that goes without saying. The fact that you had to over uh inurate the darn on shit multiple times while still being in the midst of the shit shows that it wasn't really sincere. It's like if you really was about you pay the business that pays you, honey, you would have just immediately removed yourself and not spoke up on it. But you you darn on in the midst just as much and just as vocal and key keying. But at the same time, you want the darn gonna say you just tend to the business that pays you. Honey, that's very much like Shiny O'Neal acting like you above the fray, but really you you in the midst stirring the darn on pot. And that's why you are the Nene Leaks of this darn on franchise, honey. You are the Nene Leaks, baby. Very much messy, passive aggressive, and act like you above the shit, but you really be in the damn shit, girl. I I, I see your T Jamal. So if Xavier wasn't wrong, you 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 was darn on being insincere. Mm. Okay, they say they didn't know his information to contact them privately, but he said that he gave them invites by his information. Mm. See, that's 50-50 because it's like, did you give them the business number or did you give them the, your personal number? It's like if you contacted them on business, uh, what do they look like contacting you on the business line on some personal matters? So it, it, this is semantics. It's like, yeah, they got your number, but do they got your actual personal cell phone number, your, your non-business line? Because you saying that you gave them an invite towards you know a gathering and we know that this is on some business shit this is for the come up miami but did they have your personal number that they can call you call you even off camera time see that's the million dollar question that i'm not getting did they have your personal phone number that they could have actually called you with or did they have your business nine or whether it was actually an office number or a google voice number honey which one was good? That that lies the question. But still, I, I, I think they could have pulled them to the side in a more private and more professional manner, in my opinion. So everybody's starting to come on in. We got Bam in a nice... I think she's also a Latina sister. So we got a few cisgender sisters thrown in the mix. Then we got Miles and his little friend. Uh, which I seen some pictures. I seen I seen some more explicitness of that. Once again, go to the Diva One uh it six six page and I'll reveal that uh little behind the scenes uh clip is what that once again, Miles Spears is just something cute to look at with both clothes on and clothes off, honey. But he brings his beautiful chocolate friend. Then comes Prince. And 
And I think Jamal was the last one to show up. And then we got a commercial, y'all. We zipping through this quite fast, y'all. And uh, mind you, I had seven minutes of rambling to my darn on self. We're currently at the 44 minute mark and it's an hour and nine minutes into the show. Uh oh. Whoa, shit, don't have hit the fan, honey. Just when we thought things was going good. Let me see what led up to this. I accidentally done skipped over. Okay, now I'm curious about how far in advance was this show? Because it seemed like the season finale was recorded a little bit more recently where they got to see in the first half of the season. So I'm trying to figure out what time frame was this episode recorded because now he done a seen a few episodes and now he's mad over some shit about Jamal kindly referring to, you know, telling Bam not to call Sean a bitch and all this, that, and third, which he did tell you kindly, not, you know, to, to please refrain from calling them a bitch and all this, that, and third. But now he's bringing this shit up in such a... This is why I say Bam be doing the most. But Bam, I, I was rooting... We were all rooting for you. Learn from this. God damn it. I was there going rooting for you in the first two, three episodes, but get by the fourth episode, bitch, you lost me. I, I, I tried to, I tried and tried and tried, tried, don't, 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 but you done lost it, honey. You done lost it, honey. And I understand you grew up in a hard not life for us in Honduras. Horus, uh, honey, turns out you done a, uh, during the game of personal uh, revelations, you revealed that your mama was on her darn on Al Capone type shit, honey. She she was the one of the most notorious drug traffickers. Now I ain't trying to be shady, and I understand that, but my thing is this: really, ba really bad. What was she really one of the drug traffickers? Now, her being on the cocaine line and you know helping to chop up the shit that that's not the same as being one of the most notorious known traffickers. Like was she really you know oh like was she Mother Malone, honey, from the have and have nots? Was your mother in that position or was she just one of the bitches that was naked? And you know the reason why they have them naked is so. You know, they can't stash no cocaine nowhere. Now, if your mother was one of them girls where she was on the chopping block, you know, helping to prep the shit, or if she was transporting some of the stuff here and there, like she was the middle girl, honey, because from what I get from Bam, Bam makes his mother seem like she was like the head madam or something. Like she, she, she had the girls, you know, she had a series of girls that she had to delegate. Like she was one of the head, you know, uh, mafia darn on members. But I, I'm getting more of the fact that, it, especially the the financial situation. You said that you know they grew up with humble beginnings. I'm trying to figure out well, how in the hell in one breath could she been this notorious darn on drug pusher? But you know they were struggling, and you had to turn to the life of the darn on strip club to get this fast money that you make now. Where you now uh, have this elitist like attitude, and you like to brag about your wealth and shit above the, all the other cast members. But if you really grew up with uh, somebody that was really authentically pushing drugs, like um, Fatali off of Days of Our Lives, like that bitch was pushing drugs. The one that used to play um Carly. Um, before the current actress Laura Wright, you know the um, who also played Drew Narrow on she re, she reprised a different role on General Hospital um Piddle recently as Drew Narrow, so she was known for pushing you know the drugs and and she was the head you know honcho. 
I'm trying to figure out, was his mother really that, or was she one of the naked bitches that was just prepping the shit, or she just had the, the stuff stacked on her car? It's like, girl, you, you, you really be putting 30 on 10. But back to this conversation of you calling out him on some old shit, like very minor, very minor. You you have a problem because he called you out on Dargon not referring to his friend as a B I T C H. Like, girl, sit down and have several seats. Now you want the Dargon reprise an argument for no damn reason. Like, just sit down. And uh, from what I seen, that, honey, they done gave you the boot for the reunion. Like, they ain't even decided to bring your ass to the reunion. Or you might not have decided to come, but, honey, you will not be missed at this point because, bam. You 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 just be doing too much, girl. You you really do. You you really be doing too much, motherfucking much. Why you got to be Cat Williams? Seem like once again he he he's doing too much. The jokes not even landing. Like number one, Jamal is what like six feet tall. Cat Williams is like three feet tall. Darn on Cat Williams is brown skin. Darn on Jamal is, I want to say, like two, three shades darker than me. So undeniably dark skin. The hairstyle ain't nothing. Like Jamal's hair is natural. Darn on Cat Williams is known for the darn on relaxer. Cat Williams don't really got no big teeth like that, but you call it darn on uh, Jamal Gum. So I'm trying to figure out what was the read with darn on the Cat Williams reference. Once again, honey, you. For you to be a Dargon queen, honey, you, you we could tell you one of the Dargon white Latina queens because your reeds don't don't be sticking like that, honey. Your reeds are real mm, basic, flat, sour, and aspired upon arrival, honey. And then meanwhile, you over there talking about somebody Dargon tea, and your shit over there looking Dargon too much. Like my thing is this: when y'all get these Dargon veneers and shit, and Y'all don't have them tailored to your personal mouth. It be looking like you got some darn on pearly white dentures up in your mouth. It's like the darn on whiteness is too bright up against the color of your eyes, which hence why they're, you can tell that they're um, that veneers, they're fake. Um, they're too lined up and it gives you that poke down. Look. So it's like you calling him a darn on horse with his natural teeth and your shit look like a darn on fake darn on uh, Mr. Potato Head. It's like Mr. Potato Head meets darn on Black Ink Crew. Like, girl, by the reason that somebody can darn on clap back on you and see Jamal darn on better than me. It wouldn't have paid for me to be in a part of the damn cast because I would have said everything that I'm saying right now to his face. And unlike darn on Jamal, bitch, I grew up from the darn on hood where I actually threw heads, honey. So you like the darn gonna have this life story about you growing up in the hard not life of the Honduras and all this, that, and the third, but you ain't really had the darn gonna scrap like that. You you just really learned how to scrap from darn gonna having to scrap in the club from bitches trying to take your hundreds of dollars that from um, motherfuckers who darn gonna threw a couple bands for you to darn gonna shake it because you on your new valley, you, you, on, you on your new version of P Valley type shit. But girl, I'm really one of them bitches that's about that life. Honey, it wasn't paid for me to be in Jamal's place. Because I, I I really go there with the darn gone bam. And security wouldn't have been able to get me up off his ass. I would have darn gone knocked them darn gone teeth up out his mouth. That darn gone good $25,000 darn gone smile would have been right on the motherfucking floor fucking with me, honey. So he, he know who and who not to try. Because like I said... I would love for, for darn gone bam to feel like he could darn gone say some shit like that to a, a show enough southern bitch like me, honey. Because I wouldn't give him the darn gone Nene Leaks approach, honey. But see, Jamal, he, he's very much Nene. He'll talk a little bit and then he'll sashay on out the darn gone dough. And you know, if, if he would have darn gone called a, uh, called a Nene, Honey, that would have took me out. That would have been the read within itself. I would have been like, I'm still Team Jamal, but see, that read would have been more spot on. Both of them are awkward shape. Both of them do have similar structures and all that. That would have been more of the read. But girl, like I said, sit your darn on cross breeded darn. On. You you look like a cross between the guy Cole Lizard. Uh, black ink crew and Mr. Potato Head, but you want to talk about somebody damn looks good, like you darn on Sean Paul or some shit. If you don't sit your darn on awkward to look at having ass down some fucking well.
I told y'all towards the end, we was going to have to get in more in depth with this bullshit. Lord Jesus. So Jamal pretty much in his confessional on his Nene Leaks, um, pretty much, I said what I said. <laughs> so, honey, Jamal said what he said, damn it. Girl, don't say what, what he said and have not said, honey. They, they bring up them cameras like Eddie Cohen on your ass and they're going to air your ass out now. <laughs> Child, that that was a shocking moment too. I was like with Javier. Oh my! <laughs> now, honey, we seen Jamarcus left the show, and we thought it was because darn gone, baby, darn gone, shot because the way cameras work. See, that's why I say darn gone cameras. Honey, they show what they want to show because we, they, they showcase Sean doing all this flirting and stuff. And, honey, unbeknownst to us, it was darn on Jamal trying to slide up on some darn on pretty light caramel skin, honey. I don't blame you, honey. I, I, I love me a old nice piece of light caramel twinkle tray madam self. But, honey, I'd be damned if I'm going to come off thirsty, honey, especially. But then again, my DM stay lit enough so I don't, I don't have to really come off thirsty but to, for a few people honey i always say I, I, the only people that i'm going to audition for maybe is my darn on boo I, uh, uh, old odell beckham i i combined the two love that's why i almost say odd because odell and then austin i love my austin wow uh odell beckham who else that is light skinned that's it for the light skin crew, ironically. Because everybody else is darker. Um, but yeah, <laughs> it ain't too many people that Diva Wine is just going to doggone try to throw herself out there like a trollop for. Her. But honey, doggone Jamal. And I told you, Jamal seemed like the type that would be loosey goosey like that. I told y'all a, a few weeks back about him doggone throwing his ass up in doggone uh, Sean's face on the doggone low, uh, doing them doggone dances back. Um, I think it was, what, episode six or seven? Honey, so I wouldn't put it past him. Uh, so that what allegedly drove Javier off. Javier had a different story. Javier left on some whole different type of shit, and that just might have been some minor stuff that added to it. Um, but, honey, the real shocking revelation is, honey, Jamal apparently tried to darn on flirt with darn on and tried to fill up on Miles, honey. I said, oh. And you know Miles is right there. So that that really made it damn awkward. Like, oh, shit. <laughs> Inquiring minds want to know, honey. So, uh, uh, Miles, what you got to say, boo? Oh, Lord. God darn on Xavier about to darn on choke on his drink. Uh-oh. So this goes back to the palace, honey. Jamal gave darn on Miles a ride. Flirted with him in the DMs a little bit. Oh, shit. That oh, hell. <laughs> Jamal, they about to get you caught up, girl. With Darg on Miles statement alone talking about you you interested. You was talking about a little bit too much about his sex work and his, all his escapades. Now you now you're gonna have Joe Veer wondering like, well damn. 
Now that I think about it, why, why was he really darn going wondering about my sugar baby status? Here I was thinking he might be hating and shit, mate. Uh, on the low, he might have wanted darn going to be your next sugar daddy, honey. Even though y'all about in the same age range, honey. Age ain't nothing but a number. This cash still spins the same. Mm -hmm. Honey, Joe Vigna, you might have to look over your shoulder, boo. He might have wanted to darn going to touch you at night as well, honey. Mm-mm. Uh-oh. Oh. Child, we breaking the fourth wall, leaving the darn gone producers like, well, she go on here to say more. Oh, what you mean by flirting, honey? Oh, hell. Jamal, now you trying to, honey, I, I seen the darn gone magic stick that darn gone Miles is working with. Hell, I, I, I wouldn't necessarily blame you, but I wouldn't have came off that thirsty about the situation, honey. I did not, once again, you got to ask for permission first before you touch that. I know the darn gone, I, the caramel candy that he's working with is, once again, go to Diva Wine XXX if you want to see the uncensored version of what Miles is working with. He's working with something nice, honey. But once again, you post the darn gon' ass before you touch, honey. Don't assume not nothing, honey. And like I said, that mm -mm, thirsty and somewhat darn gone predatorial. Mm -mm. Well, child, we all seen this darn on Twitter. That don't mean nothing. See, now this is the thing when it comes to sex workers and cam girls and stuff. Honey, don't think because you seen your favorite porn star darn on naked all the time that you could just darn on. Uh, feel like you could just darn on touch them inappropriately. Once again, permission is still key, even with darn on adult entertainment workers. So I, I, I don't give a damn that he done seen you naked spread. Honey, I done seen you d do everything, honey. I even seen you darn on come with no motherfucking hands, which is quite impressive, darling. But I would not dare think that that would make me feel comfortable enough that darn on reach and grab the darn on caramel candy without darn on so much as permission. Uh-uh. Jamal, you out in my Yana Van Zot voice. You out of order. You out of order. Ain't no bleach. Oh, child. Oh, well, speaking of ain't no bleach, you know, uh, this will be the uh, point where I add my promo in here. I do give ain't no bleaching services and inner thigh lightning services. I do, I do have some before and after pictures coming, even of myself. So, with that being said, make sure you check out my professional page, Royal Garnet Aesthetics, to learn about how to professionally lighten darn on dark, melanated skin without looking like darn on Michael Jackson from This Is Thriller, Thriller, Thriller. Yeah, we ain't trying to look like darn on Thriller Michael Jackson. We ain't trying to look like Little Kim trying to be Asian, honey, cross-play tees. Honey, we still going to have you looking... Deeply darn on highly flavored, honey. Nice succulent chocolate curl meal or red bone skin, whatever your natural starting point is. We're going to get you lifted back up evenly to your natural birth skin tone. Why we darn going to get rid of those discolored areas in your intimate areas, darling. So if you want to learn more information about that, check out my Royal Garnet Aesthetics page on Twitter, Instagram, and you can message me to inquire about more information. Now, that I got that little bit of advertisement out the way. Let's segue back on to this confessional booth. Oh. This fake shit will kill you. Who, who is the real you? Honey, that, that would have been the perfect time if they would have bumped some Fantasia. What about me? Honey, talking about uh, re uh, reveal the true mask behind yourself. What? Well, damn. Girl, there you go once again with this darn gone hood persona, girl. 
Girl, you grew up in motherfucking Honduras, honey. But then again, I guess you you did grew up in the traditional because if we uh, if we actually uh research what the ghetto and the hood is, I, I guess Honduras would be somewhat on that list. So I, I stand corrected. But girl, you did not grow up in the actual urbanness uh, street area about that life, girl. Girl, you've been fighting the girls in the club for about 2.5 seconds, and now you think you darn gonna Jocelyn Hernandez, girl. So Jamal walks out, Prince darn gonna stops him in the elevator, and, you know, they darn gonna talk him to come back in. Okay, they they don't finally got Nene uh two point back into the scene, honey. Bam is still turning up. Now we like, Lord Jesus, we like twenty minutes in, post this fighting shit, and the, here he is still going on. Okay, 10 minutes later after this, they finally get back to asking questions. Oh, shit. <laughs> now we get to the awkward question about uh, Xavier pulls the question, that the, uh, have you ever cheated on your boyfriend? Which, you know, the irony of this question being asked, well, you know, we just got the scandal we just mentioned earlier with Prince. Sean and Jamal alleging that they done got some information in regards to Jovia hooking up with darn gone um, Xavier. And this is when pretty much he gets, uh, he calls darn gone Jamal and them out on that. And that was that. Prince get a question about who you see that you relate to most business-wise. He points to Jamal. You know... As I'm looking at him, he's sort of, he somewhat reminds me of a Kofi Sarabe from um, Queen Sugar, except more of a sweet version. He remind he he looks like what Kofi might would be if he was a tad bit lighter, because you know Kofi is sub-Saharan dark, nice, rich, sculpted chocolate, and you know he's more like Kelly Rowland chocolate. Okay, they go back and forth all this thing again. Prince, you, you, you was wrong the way that you deliver it. You darn gonna have that liquid courage. That liquid courage darn gonna have you darn gonna uh, uh, talking about the tea at the wrong motherfucking time, girl. So, girl, you was in the wrong. And then, surprisingly, they are all, they do their confessionals, uh, giving a definition of what the come up means to them. And then they all get together, including Bam, who was just trying to darn on go at Jamal, you know, I, I want to say maybe an hour ago, because y'all know how they do with this editing and shit. Um, I want to say uh, it, it was like this whole party took maybe an hour to an hour and a half. That I summarized in about 10 minutes. But yeah, uh, surprisingly, but this is the same night. And now they back, you know, toasting. So it is what it is. I'd be damned if I've toasted with somebody who has shit to say with me, honey. 
I would have did like darn on Mariah Hook and would have darn on broke that glass and would have been ready to shake motherfucking darn on uh, black ink darn on potato head, bitch. Darn on want to talk about me, bitch. But that's just me. But you know, Jamal took the high road and they all clank, clank, clank. And that is the season finale of the Come Up Miami. What are y'all thoughts on this season? Uh, feel free to leave it down below. I will give my thoughts on the reunion. I wonder if they're going to have a one or two part reunion. I look forward to seeing if it's actually going to be two parts or just one. They might just do a one part reunion. But I'm going to watch that um, later on tonight. The first the first or maybe the only reunion. And I will have that uploaded for y'all sometime next week. So that is it, y'all. Feel free to like, comment, share, subscribe. Give me y'all thoughts on this episode and the season overall. And I will see y'all soon with more videos. Mwah.